Welcome to this second hour of a live special edition of The Beat with Ari Melbourne. Joy is out on vacation, so we are here to cover what has been this confirmation for the first time in public where you can read it yourself. The DOJ is investigating more than one crime, including possible violations of the Espionage Act. Here's what you need to know. A federal judge unsealing these documents connected to the FBI search of Mar-a-Lago. So we have for the first time the receipts that you see on your screen. The documents include the warrant authorizing the search, this property receipt, that's the literal receipts, showing exactly what the agents found, cataloged, and took, seized because it wasn't Trump's property, from the property compound you see on your screen. That includes 11 sets of classified documents, some at the highest levels of classification, at least one set marked top secret SCI that refers to top secret sensitive compartmentalized info. The documents are only supposed to be viewed in special government facilities. Mar-a-Lago is not one of them. Then there's four sets of top secret documents, three sets of secret, and three of confidential. All of this comes after Donald Trump had returned what looks like, I guess, the partial amount that was also, according to the government, not authorized to be there, 15 boxes that went back in January. Now on this basically third go around, they're still finding top secret documents. The property receipt does not detail the substance, which makes sense because the whole point is the government doesn't want everyone to know what's in them. Meanwhile, Washington Post reporting FBI agents were looking for classified documents that could relate to nuclear weapons when they carried out the search. NBC News has not independently confirmed that rather harrowing Washington Post story. As for the search, the warrant says that the locations included the 45 office, storage rooms, and other areas within the premises used by the former president and his staff. That specificity seems to suggest the FBI had some idea not only what it was looking for, which it found, but where to find it. Did they have an inside tip? That's one of the many questions that is still on the table, Wall, for the first time we have the receipts. I am joined now by Ben Rhodes, a former Deputy National Security Advisor and MSNBC analyst, and Tali Farhidian Weinstein, former a federal, state, and prosecutor who clerked for then Judge Garland. Uh, welcome to you both. Ben, uh, we have been covering this now. We're in live coverage. There's a lot we learn and some things we still don't know. In terms of what we learn, when you go through these receipts, um, what do you see? Something that is concerning but typical, something a little atypical, or a very concerning security breach that apparently was ongoing? I mean, I think, Ari, this is very concerning. I mean, it can't really get more concerning than the levels of classification that are in these documents. When you talk about top secret documents and you talk about top secret secure compartmented documents, you're talking about the most secret and in- sensitive information that the U.S. government has. You're talking about information that is derived from or refers to really sensitive sources of and methods of intelligence collection or perhaps assessments of uh, foreign adversaries or defense, nuclear information, uh, as the Washington Post uh, reported. Um, this is really secret stuff. And it's also stuff that is very clearly marked secret, Ari. Right? Like, this is stamped on every page. Uh, these had to be printed out and to be taken out. Uh, these are not the kinds of things that are just lying around. And this stuff cannot leave government facilities. Um, when I was in government, I had a security clearance for all this kind of information. It never left my office at the White House. It's not the kind of thing you even took home with you to work on when you're in government, never mind when you're out. Um, so I think this raises the enormous question of why did Donald Trump want this information? Um, for what purpose did he have boxes of this information with him in Mar-a-Lago? Uh, why did he not return it? But in terms of the nature of the national security information, this confirms, these receipts confirm, this is the sensitive stuff that you don't want to fall into the wrong hands and that, frankly, people could aim to profit from in ways that are very harmful to U.S. national security. Ben, can you expound at all on what that, that highest level stuff might be? Not, not that we're asking what it would be in this instance on the property, but in general, what kind of material is that? Well, again, in general, you're talking about material that's not just like an assessment of the U.S. government. It's not just the intelligence community writing a report about something. It's material that would be a blueprint, frankly, to intelligence sources and methods. How do we collect that information? What is the underlying intelligence that informs it? Or what are the positions of uh, U.S. defense or intelligence resources? It would not be top secret if it was, again, just like some finding or some report about uh, an interesting issue or a leader from the intelligence community. Uh, that classification indicates 
that the revelation of this information could provide adversaries or anybody who has an interest in this information with not just proprietary information of the U.S. government, that's confidential, that's secret, but really the blueprints, uh, uh, the manner in which we had collected that information or uh, a defense program that we want to stay secret. Or in, in the case of a secure compartmented piece of information, this is something that even if you have a top secret security clearance, you have to be read specifically into this program. <laughs> Uh, of U.S. intelligence. Mm. They, they make these levels for a reason, and the whole system depends upon people abiding by the rules. And Donald Trump clearly acted as if the rules did not apply to him uh, when he took this information with him out of a government facility. Yeah, you you say there are levels. I'm sure you know Kendrick Lamar said there's levels to this you and I know. And it sounds like everyone involved knows these levels, including potentially Donald Trump, which brings us to Tali and why it's legally worse if he's on notice, if he's under subpoena. Um, but let's start at the beginning, Tali. I don't know about you. I'm old enough to remember Monday. And I remember a lot of people around Donald Trump and on the right on Monday saying, well, what are they going for? And is this even valid? And was this political persecution? Almost as if this might never come out. Um, the, the attorney general who you once worked for played this out legally, lawfully, but it's out. Uh, first question is the simplest, Tali, and then we can build. Does the warrant mm -hmm. and the material suggest that this was a valid search? Oh, Ari, there's absolutely no question that everything here was by the book. Uh, it's actually pretty tightly written in terms of where they wanted to look for materials and what they wanted to look for. And they cited three really serious federal statutes. Now, uh, I should say that it is not required and not really the practice to cite every statute that you're thinking about. So there's probably even more where that came from. But those three are serious crimes. These are not sort of technical violations. Uh, and at least one of them was very surprising to me, uh, the citation to the obstruction statute 1519, which I think we'll talk more about. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, so it, I think we had all anticipated that there would be reference to some of the various statutes that prohibit the concealment, the destruction, the passing to others of classified or other government records. But that one, 1519, that's just a garden variety obstruction statute. It's in the part of the U.S. Code that has a list of crimes that people commit once they've committed other crimes and they're trying not to get caught. So things like tampering with a witness or destroying documents or concealing materials. And, you know, that w was a surprise and it raises a bunch of questions. And I also think it puts Donald Trump or whoever may be the target of this investigation in, in a pretty precarious place. It raises questions because it, what is it that he was trying, if it was him, to obstruct? Was the hoarding of the documents itself some kind of obstruction he didn't want people to see these documents or once he started to hear look you can't have this stuff you got to give it back to us he wouldn't do that and that's the reason for citing that statute and the reason it kind of puts him in hot water ari is because that's pretty guilty behavior right mm. uh if someone says to you well you can't have this and then you say well i'm not going to give it back to you it's going to make it hard for him to say oh i didn't realize that this was illegal Right, because he's so on notice. Uh, he clearly thought, from what we can tell, that he could continue to run this out, that they wouldn't really go in and conduct a search or raid, whatever you want to call it, that they wouldn't send the agents in. Did he fundamentally misjudge your former boss, Merrick Garland? Absolutely, he did. And, uh, you know, let's not call it a raid first of all, because a raid suggests something unlawful, and there was nothing unlawful about this. He misjudged Judge Garland, uh, excuse me, Attorney General Garland, that's what I used to call him, uh, and how steely he is. And I think he sort of demonstrated uh, the, the casualness about national security that is at the heart of everything that is going on here, because, you know, we still don't know if that the execution of that search warrant was an end in and of itself just to go and get this stuff out of danger, out of an insecure place where people are walking around mm -hmm. who knows who could have access to it, who knows what he wants to do with it, uh, or if it was a step 
in a criminal investigation that is still unfolding. But I think it was at least at least the former, uh, and maybe both. And uh, it just, it, it sort of tells you, I think, something about the state of his mind and the people around him, yeah. that they didn't understand uh, what uh, what kind of insecurity this creates for the entire country uh, if these kinds of documents are lying around for all the reasons that we just heard.